Hi, I'm Carlos Argueta and I'm the SHL Robotics team. Today, I want to introduce to you Cedred, the self-driving ads robot, as part of the OpenCV Spatial AI Competition 2021. It all started a few years ago when I began my teaching job. After the launch, I would normally take some long walks around the neighborhood of the school. And I started noticing many small movable billboards like the one on the screen right now. And I couldn't help but feel like, why are these billboards right in front of the store? People can see the store, so the billboard is wasted. Plus, these billboards have wheels. What if they could move on their own and go to some crowded public spaces not too far from the store? That way, people could actually notice the billboard and ask, where is this store? And probably even find it later. That's when I thought, maybe I should build a moving advertising robot. That way, companies could pay me to run advertisements on their behalf in parks or other public spaces and get more exposure. And for a long time, this was more of a dream of mine. Until last summer, summer of 2020, and I finally told myself, maybe I should give it a shot. And I started by buying a mobile chassis or a mobile robot and teaching myself the robot operating system, ROSE. I wanted to focus on the navigation part of it so that I could know how to safely navigate some environments. And around the same time, I stumbled upon the Kickstarter campaign for the OpenCV AI kit. When I saw the advertised capabilities of such cameras, I couldn't help but think these cameras will be useful for my project. So I immediately backed the project, purchased three Oak Ds and one Oak One. And then, in early 2021, I stumbled upon another surprise, which was the Spatial AI Competition 2021 from OpenCV. And I was like, yes, this is just what I needed to keep me motivated on this project. So I immediately wrote a proposal and joined the competition. I felt extremely happy when I was selected as one of the finalists. So I immediately started purchasing other components that I knew I was gonna need for the robot. For example, a very large battery to power all the computers, cameras, and the big displays where the advertisements were gonna be played. And I started trying to put things together, trying to uh, start solving the problems that I talked about in my proposal until little by little things started taking shape. When I felt more confident, and also thanks to the kind support of some family members, I proceeded to purchasing two outdoor 49-inch displays for the advertisement, and I also uh, asked a woodworker to help me build the upper part of the robot, the one that would carry the most of the payload of the robot. But it wasn't until early May, when most of the physical parts of the robot were completed, that the most serious coding, testing, and retesting and recoding of all of the software components of Cedred took place. So now, I'm very excited to introduce to all of you the four main features of Cedred the self-driving advertisement robot powered by OakD. Cedrad is a very heavy piece of hardware. When navigating autonomously, it is very important to make sure that it does it in a safe way, to avoid hurting people, damaging property, or damaging itself. The first problem that I encounter when navigating in outdoor unstructured environments is that simultaneous localization and mapping SLAM, approaches are not that robust. So I needed to find another way to navigate without maps. Since many of the paths where Cedra is going to navigate are very well defined, like the red path you will see in the video shortly, it made sense to me to just create some segmentation models that could segment the drivable surface and let Cedrat follow them. 
So I started by remote controlling Cedrat and navigate those paths while letting the OGD cameras record frames that would later be used to annotate a data set of driving surface segments to generate a segmentation model based on DeepLab V3. So here we can see an ROS node using the segmentation model to detect the red path that Cedrat needs to navigate using the two front cameras of the robot. After segmenting and detecting the road, connected component analysis is performed in order to compute the area of the road detected and the centroid of the road. So the two dots that you see in the left side of the video, you can see a green and a red dot, those are the centroids of the path. The red dot is the actual centroid and the green dot is the adjusted centroid based on where in the frame the road is detected. All that information is sent to another ROS node running on the main computer and this new node uses this information to calculate the best possible navigation goal for Cedrat. And this navigation goal is just used by the standard navigation stack of robot operating system that will let Cedrat navigate safely while avoiding obstacles using the LiDAR. So how does it work? How can Cedrat know how far is the navigation goal? Well, the RGB frame is used to detect the path and calculate the centroid of the path and then the location of the centroid in the RGB frame is transformed to the location of the centroid in the depth frame. Using the spatial location calculator of depth AI, we can know, we can calculate the real world location of the centroid. This information is sent back to the path safety node in the main computer and by, by combining the real world location of both centroids, the left camera centroid and the right camera centroid, a adequate navigation goal is computed and sent to the move base node of the navigation stack, which will make sure that Cedred navigates safely to that point. Once Cedred reaches that point, a new navigation goal is computed in the same way. Whenever any of the two front cameras loses track of the path, some correction measures will take place. For instance, it will rotate the robot towards the last known orientation where the path was detected, or it might prompt Cedrat to move slightly forward or backward to try to redetect the path. Also, two points, the starting and ending points were predefined in advance and whenever Cedrat reaches one of those starting or ending points, Cedrat will rotate by 180 degrees and go back to the previous point. This assuming that the path is just a straight line. And this is the first major feature of Cedrat while navigating safely using Oak D cameras a way to detect the path to follow and navigate it safely by creating navigation goals that allow Cedra to navigate while avoiding obstacles using the LiDAR. The second main navigation feature powered by Oak is very useful where the area to navigate is not very large but still not very structured so that it's not very easy to set the navigation goals. For instance, consider this circle-like path around this big tree. The area is relatively small, but there are not many walls or big obstacles that could be used for as a reference for setting the navigation goals. In this scenario, even if the map can be easily created, it's very easy when setting navigation goals to let the robot go off the path, hit small obstacles, or just exhibit undesired behaviors. 
So to solve this issue, I created a tool that uses OD cameras to set simple markers on the map that can be later used to determine, easily determine where to set the navigation goals. Or you can even use them as reference point to draw in some virtual walls that will make sure Sadrat stays within the desired path. So how does it work? The computer that connects to the OGD cameras has a node that captures the frames, combines the RGB and the DEF frame and sends it back to the main computer, the one that runs the navigation and visualization software. On that main computer, you can have a look at what the cameras see and you can click on that image to set some markers on the map, as you can see right now. So again, the spatial location calculator will determine the real world position of those markers, will convert that real world position that is in terms of the camera frame back to the robot frame, and then from the robot frame back to the map frame, and then it's gonna draw those markers on the map. So all I need to do is set two markers at the two sides of the path, and then move my robot forward, set again two markers to delimit the path, and again move a little bit forward, and set again two markers to mark the path, and continue this process until the entire path has been traversed and carefully marked with those virtual markers. Once the mapping and marking process has concluded, we can save the map and then open it using an image editor and easily create virtual walls by using the virtual markers on the map as a reference. So here we can see how after creating the virtual walls, we can easily set the navigation goals, making sure that Sadrat never leaves the intended path. The goals can be set manually, can be pre-recorded, or can even be set by using the segmentation models described before. The main point here is that by using this marking approach, we can easily create and delimit maps in otherwise very unstructured outdoor environments. And this is the second main navigation feature powered by OD that Sedrat uses. The third main navigation related feature powered by OGD is related to the fact that I'm using a 2D LiDAR instead of a 3D LiDAR. The problem with 2D LiDAR is that if an obstacle is lower than the line of sight of the LiDAR, then the obstacle will not be detected. So let's see what happens to Sedrat when navigating by only using the LiDAR for obstacle avoidance assistance. As you can see in this video, the LiDAR can detect some obstacles and add them to the coast map, but it's not going to detect those simple obstacles that we placed in Sedra's path. And Sedra collides with them. This can result in very dangerous situations and has to be avoided. So my solution is to use the two front-facing OD cameras that are installed relatively low in Sadrat's body as virtual laser scans. The process is relatively simple. The computer where the OGD cameras are attached will stream the depth frames back to the main computer and a special node running on that computer will convert the depth frames to point clouds and then the point clouds to virtual laser scans. Another node that specializes in combining different laser scans will combine the LiDAR data with this virtual OD laser scans data to create a final unified laser scan. This way, obstacles at the level of the LiDAR and lower obstacles that can be detected by the cameras 
can be avoided while navigating. Here, the virtual laser scans successfully detect the obstacle and Sedrat successfully avoids them while navigating towards the set goal. And this is the third and final main navigation feature powered by OGD. All in my best attempt to keep Sedrat navigating safely while serving advertisements for my clients. The final main feature of Sedrat powered by OGD is not related to navigation but is extremely important for my application. Since Sedrat is a self-driving advertisement robot, it is very important to be able to gather data that can later be used to give users some analytics. So using two OGD cameras attached on top of both displays, we can do facial analysis to detect the age, gender, and emotional reaction of viewers. We can also track them to see for how long they look at the screens, whether they return, and level of attention. All this metadata in JSON format can be stored and later transformed into very useful graphs for further analysis. This is definitely invaluable data for our customers. And that is the fourth major feature of Sedrat powered by Oak D. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you like it or have further questions, feel free to contact me at this email.